Late Night Health continues. I'm Mark Allen. Robert Clancy, author of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Soul, joins us. We're going to talk about forgiveness, Robert. What is forgiveness? Wow, that that is uh, such a hot topic with most people. And my inspirational thought on that is to err is human, to love divine, but to forgive is a divine journey into that beautiful place of love. And think about the, the hurdle that most people have with forgiveness. It's something that they hold on to, and I'm not going to give this away. But doesn't that lead to a healthy, uh, you know, a happier, healthier life? You know, forgiveness is never about the other person. It's just about what's in your own heart. And when, you know, there's always a place then and where happiness can be found. And and I think that when you can do that, it's really found in yourself. And forgiveness starts with you. And I think that's really important because if if somebody's done me wrong and you forgive them for that. You don't have to associate with them. You don't have to be best friends, but you can at least forgive them. That takes a, a, a load off, if you will, of your from your mind, your shoulders. Yeah, and it's never really about the other person either. It's, it's about you bringing yourself to a place where you don't hold that baggage anymore. Well, I hope uh, sometime you will forgive me for getting you on the radio every week uh, with us here at Late Night Health. Maybe maybe not forgive us. Maybe just kind of <laughs> challenge us as you do. I love the challenging uh, work from last week. Uh, Robert Clancy, the author of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Soul, uh, give us uh, a look at LateNightHealth.com and you'll learn more about Robert. Late Night Health continues. Uh, Last year or so, we interviewed Dr. Jamie Kaufman. She's an MD, uh, and we talked to her about acid reflux. She has a brand new book out, Dr. Kaufman's Acid Reflux Diet. She did this with her assistant, Sonia Hung, and Chef Philip uh, Gelb, who's a vegan uh, chef. Uh, Dr. Kaufman, welcome back to Late Night Health. My pleasure. So let's first talk about acid reflux. My understanding is that it's on the rise. Reflux is so big, it's almost invisible. And that's because the whole idea that reflux is just about heartburn and indigestion is wrong. That's a esophageal reflux. Now there's something called respiratory reflux or reflux or the backflow of stomach contents into the throat, into the respiratory system and it causes post-nasal drip, throat clearing, sinus problems, allergies, and even asthma. It's mistaken for asthma. So we think that reflux affects about half of the American population. That's a big number. Holy moly. And I just want a point of clarification, and that is that I eat lunch or dinner, and with one of the refluxes, it can actually flow into not only my throat, my lungs? Well, indeed. In fact, the people who most often have respiratory reflux into the throat and lungs are not people who have heartburn and typical symptoms. They do tend to be people who are on the go, and they get home late, and once they get home, they begin eating, and they essentially eat, 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 and then they go lie on the sofa and watch the news, and they get up and they have maybe a little ice cream, and then they get ready for bed, and then they have another little snack, and they essentially have done their entire refueling for the day from the time they've got home from work or or the gym or whatever to the time they go to bed. Those people reflux at night, and it's nighttime reflux where the stuff sits in a little puddle and dribbles into the lung, into the sinuses, into the nose. That's the one, the silent refluxer, if you will, that gets into trouble, and that's what's new, understanding respiratory reflux, late night eating being a big factor. You, it turns out, surprised me. You're supposed to say, how do I surprise you? How do I surprise you? You're a foodie. Well, but there's now there's healthy foodies, too. So, you know, last night for dinner, I made the most delectable salmon with rice with cumin and turmeric. I had a, a, a lovely salad, had artichokes and avocado, and also some sautéed uh, green beans in olive oil with uh, with dill. So there's, there's, listen to the words, because the refrain has changed, no question about it. Um, all those old recipes from Gourmet Magazine, you can trash them. 
It's lean, clean, green, and alkaline. And so the question is not just how do you beat reflux, but if you want to live a long life, if you don't want to have obesity and diabetes and so on, um, then you're going to be uh, eating much cleaner. I, I want you to know that I used to weigh a lot, and I now weigh exactly what I weighed when I was in high school, and my body fat is 17%, and that's low for a woman, 17%. And I have to tell you, if you haven't seen her picture, it's hubba hubba. Thank you. You're welcome. I mean, it, it, true. So, that you know, have you sold your soul to the devil? Because you have been in practice for 25 years, I believe. No more. More. I've sold my soul to no devil. <laughs> I'll tell you who sold their soul to the devil. Who's that? The medical establishment. The medical establishment. The food has made us sick in my lifetime. Right. The food industry has made us sick. And the healthcare industry has pills and procedures and never sits down with people and talks about this is time for some serious, serious reboot. You, I had a feeling that you, would you say that you're, you're integrative or you, you have yeah, a... I would say very much so. So that you do, I mean, I came into your office, you diagnosed me with re- reflux, and you would say, all right, I want you to do this, this, and this prior to taking any prescription drugs. Change your diet, well, exercise. We do a lot more. You know, I do the examination of the throat, which is a, a barometer for the reflux system, will tell me whether you reflux during the day or the night or both. It'll tell me what your relative severity is. I'll give you a grade. I had a woman just come in uh, who had terrible, terrible coughing and bad lungs. Her lungs were so bad that I sent her to a surgeon. She had her surgery in November, and she comes back today, no coughing, breathing normally. She's the one. I mean, we don't recommend it very often. Right. Uh, surgery is for only a few percent, but she, she was her lungs were going to fall on the floor. <laughs> so what, 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 I'm, what I am saying is when you come into the office, we're going to evaluate the severity and the pattern of the reflux. We're going to do a body composition analysis. Are you overweight or not overweight? People who have a big belly, when they lie down, that big belly is pushing on the stomach. So almost all of them have nighttime reflux, even if they're not eating late. So then we start with the idea that everyone can do a two-week detox, and the two-week detox is strict as strict could be. And then after the two weeks, depending upon how severe your disease is, we can actually move to a more regular diet, faster or slower. Got it. Got it. Uh, You also mentioned alkalinity. I know that a lot of uh, healthcare practitioners both traditional allopathic docs as well as alternative docs are saying that having an acid body leads to yeah, disease. They're, all, they're, they're, they're absolutely full of nonsense. They, 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 they talk about acids, in, and you take them in, and they become alkaline. And alkaline, you take it in, and it becomes acid. A chicken does not become acid once it goes in your body. Everybody has the same acidity, okay? Inside your body, there's very, very, very little wriggle room. If you take in additional acids, you pee them out. Um, Now, all of that said, I recommend alkaline diet and alkaline water, and that's not because of what's happening um, inside your body, in your bloodstream. It's because of what's happening to the tissue. It's what's happening to the throat. It's what's happening to the esophagus. It's what's happening to the tissues that are susceptible to damage from reflux. So if you have acid reflux, uh, drinking, say, a uh, soda pop that has the same acidity as stomach acid is a bad idea. So I'm not so much and forgetting about forgetting the, forgetting the sugar content of that pop too. Well, sugar addiction is a whole other matter. I mean, most people don't know this, but 80 percent of the products in the supermarket have sugar in them, and most of them don't need sugar, including, I mean, for example, chicken stock. Who needs sugar in their chicken stock? Right. So there's a, you know, it's a, these are big, complicated questions. This book is designed to give people an overview of what I think are the important trends towards longevity diet, what is really healthy, Um, and no question about it. I mean, if you want to make a big substitution, stop eating butter and start eating olive oil. Um, But, I mean, it goes goes farther beyond that. It's really a question of of sugar addiction. It's all a question of, of, of timing, planning meals, 
and thinking uh, carefully about what you eat, at least for the first few months. I know that uh, I say this all the time on the show. My, I'm a big foodie. I think I don't know if you remember that from our previous I conversations. Do. I mean, such a, I'm such a foodie that that our son is a chef. He's a professional chef, uh, specializing in small plates. And some of these things look really good. Some of your recipes look good. Grilled pork with savory uh, uh, cardamom and cumin really appeals to me. Uh, you would like it's a that. nice combination a, of spices: the yeah. savory cardamom and cumin. Yeah, no, absolutely. Things like that. So, should uh, you know? We used to say, uh, or doctors used to say, "Oh, you have problems. Uh, drink milk." That was one. And the other was stay away from spices. Can well, you comment? Well, it turns out the spices aren't that bad. We've found out that people are different. Everyone is different. Duh. Right. Okay, so, for example, when my reflux was at its worst, I could not touch chocolate, white wine, <sighs> green peppers, onions, and cucumbers. Okay. Well, green, green, uh, pepper, green peppers to me should be outlawed. Orange and red, well, but yellow, I, but, but I, could, okay. I could always eat. I could always eat red peppers. And by the way, I had a patient come in the other day and say, isn't that funny? I can eat green peppers, but I can't eat red peppers. So what I'm saying to you is something important, that there aren't any one-size-fits-all rules except during the detox period. But to give you an example about that. For example, we think that banana is one of the best uh, 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 fruits for a refluxer. But right. there's a small percentage of people for whom, guess what, banana is a trigger food. So there is work to be done in sleuthing to look at, you know, how, in, how you feel after you eat and how you feel the next day. I mean, if every time you, you wake up in the morning um, and you're hoarse and you're coughing and you have a sore throat and you look back and you say, that's funny, um, I had salad with green peppers. You might want to analyze what else was in that salad and whether that you're eating trigger foods. So uh, the hard part about it is everybody's different. And we, and we discuss that in this book, some of the questions of how do you identify trigger foods and what process you should go through. Turns out that uh, some of the trigger foods aren't so obvious. Nuts are trigger foods for a lot of people, especially, believe it or not, cashews. And, um, uh, but, but soy seems to be fine. Uh, almonds are the, and, and, and uh, uh, pistachios are, are the least likely to cause trouble for refluxing. And, and peanuts, so I, 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 eat, I eat peanuts, but I'm not, it's not my favorite nut. Well, it's a The insane Daryl about- Wayne is my favorite <laughs> nut. Uh, our guest is Dr. Uh, Jamie Kaufman, and we are talking about acid reflux and really how to prevent it. So in a word, can acid reflux be eliminated and reversed. Absolutely. It can be completely eradicated. However, it's going to take work and it's going to require you open the Pandora's box that it makes you think about what you eat and when you eat it. My, the, the, the real problem I had is no chocolate. Yeah. You know, well, a day chocolate's like... only, it's only a trigger food for half of people. It's not everybody that explodes with chocolate. Got it. But it has a lot of different chemicals in it that predispose most many people to reflux. All right, when we come back, we'll continue our conversation from converse on, on acid reflux from coughing to, I want to ask about probiotics. Uh, join us at LateNightHealth.com. Uh, Dr. Jamie's uh, book cover will be there, uh, bio about her, and of course, we'll be on iTunes as well. Uh, more coming up. Don't go away as Late Night Health continues. <laughs> 